When it's just you, well, times can be tough. When there's no one to catch your ball. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube, back at you again with another video. This time I want to talk about saving for a house. So, um, 2017 was my main year to reach two goals that I had set out, which was saving to buy my dream car, which um, I'll make another video about, and saving to buy a house. And, uh, you know, today is the 27th of December, and um, I accomplished both before December. So let's just talk about saving for a house. So uh, you got to keep in mind that demographics and uh, pay plays a big part in um, buying a house, uh, you know, where you stay and stuff determines um, the cost of living and the cost of uh, real estate in, in that area. So for me, I stay in Mississippi down south and um, house prices are fairly cheap. I mean, you can get uh, you can get a house, just a house might not be the best house but you could get a house for 70 75 maybe even 60,000 so I know um, and when I say those prices I mean like 75 or 80,000 I get you a three bedroom two bath might not be the best but it's three bedroom two bath it's something to start off with so uh, for me uh, I was looking into the um, the normal prices of having uh, a okay house those prices start at at least a hundred and ten thousand and go up. Um, the houses that I was I was looking at was around two hundred grand. Uh, so we'll just put it at that for two hundred grand. Uh, I'm getting a house, saving for a house. So what are some things that you need? First, you need to create a budget. So everyone knows that I'm really good at saving money and creating budgets and all that stuff. I use Mint, uh, which is an app that you can download from the App Store. No, I'm not endorsed by Mint. I just think it's a really good app and it translates from your phone to your computer and lets you create budgets and goals and see your credit score and all of that. So um, I, that, that would be the first thing I would say. Create a written budget or um, do an Excel sheet or use Mint and stick to that budget, stick to that uh, goal that you set look at it weekly so create it on the first or create it on the 31st and go through it the whole week i mean the whole month but um check back and reevaluate every week to see how you're doing on your budget that's like the main thing in order to make this work the second thing is uh the price so um you definitely should have 20 percent saved when buying a house that's my suggestion and you know a lot of people that I follow and watch on YouTube and other places that's their suggestion 20% down uh, is a good place to be so you won't have PMI which is private mortgage insurance um, so let's see you get the 20% down and then after that you need to uh, figure out where you're gonna put it so for me I don't I don't think you should put your money or that big, uh, that large amount of money into um, a regular savings account at a bank. The reason why is, first of all, it's too easy to grab. Um, if you have 40000 or $20,000 uh, laying around in a savings account and it's down the street, you would be tempted to go uh, and get some out and do other things with it, especially if you're not disciplined in saving money. So what I did, even though I am disciplined, what I did was um, I use uh, non-brick-and-mortar banks. So I only use online banks. The reason why I do that is because they have a, a high-yield interest. So right now I'm using Ally. I've been using them for about two years. And that's like my favorite bank. I have three different banks that I uh, bank with, but Ally is my favorite bank. And the reason being is because of the interest rate and also because it's harder for me to get the money. If you really want to spend some money, you can you uh, you will just go down and get it out of your savings account if it was at a bank. But with an online bank, you'd have to go online. You would have to uh, put in how much you want. Then it takes two business days to get to a regular bank. Then you'd have to drive to the regular bank and get it. 
too much work. Therefore, that's why I say it's the best place to park your money, not only because of that, but because of the high interest rates. If you were using something like Wells Fargo or uh, Bank of America or Chase, you had twenty or forty thousand in. You would probably be getting like four dollars um, a month on your money in return. But if you use an online bank that has a one percent or better interest rate, you'll be getting twenty to forty dollars a month on your money. So that's why I say use that for the twenty percent down. The second thing I did for saving um, for a house was I um, cut I cut back on a lot of my expenses. The more free money you have, the more money you can save. So uh, a few things that I do is I don't have cable. I use Netflix. It's like ten dollars a month, or eleven, whatever it is. And uh, I love buying coffee. That's like one of my addictions. Everybody have their addictions, but I don't buy coffee out of stores anymore. So I don't go to Starbucks or PJs anywhere and get my coffee. Um, I buy I buy in bulk from like Walmart or somewhere. And I make my coffee at home. And I don't use the care because I use the old-fashioned uh, coffee maker because um, it's cheaper. And it does the same thing. I just need some caffeine in my system. I mean, I still splurge every now and then. Probably buy two coffees a month, you know, if I'm out with people. Uh, I believe it's a time and a place to converse and, you know, be social. But I don't just go out every day when everyone from work go goes out and buy coffee. Um, so let's see. I did that. Another thing to do is cutting down your uh, electricity and water bill when using appliances. So I try to be mindful of when I uh, run the AC and the heat or do certain things. I feel like you don't have to run your AC and your heat all day, every day, or you know, have it on automatic. I know a lot of people like to do that, but for me, I'm the type of person where um, my body fluctuates or it can fluctuate with the heat or the changes of the temperature. So um, if I need it to be cold before I go to sleep and I want to be cold, you know, for an hour, an hour before I go to sleep, I turn on the AC, let it get cold, then I fall asleep. I usually don't wake up just because of the temperature change or if I need it to get hot, vice versa. Um, so, yeah, that's the uh, second thing, making sure that you uh, watch your or try to cut down your spending when it comes to your appliance and utilities. Um, let's see. Uh, third thing that I done to save money oh yeah pay off all debt if you have credit card debts and student loan debts pay those off now I understand that a lot of people have student loan debts and it's hard to pay those off uh, you might have 40 or 50 thousand don't worry about that just you know continue to make your payments and do what you can but if you have credit card uh, if you have credit card debts uh, or other kind of uh, just loans, mom and pop shop loans um, that's at 21% interest or 18% interest, you need to pay those off before you get into a house. Um, it's just, it'll just be, it'll be something out of your hair and it'll be more money you have freed up to do other things with. So, um, yeah, pay off all of your debt. If you have a student loan, don't worry about that. But other than that, pay off all of your debt. Um, another thing that you need to do is save at least three to six months of living expenses. So if you make uh, $5,000 a month, you need to have $15,000 saved up before you move into a house or 30000 if you're doing six months. I mean, it just gives you a peace of mind and it's a big cushion and you need to have that money saved up on top of your 20% down that you're planning to uh, use to buy the house you know when you buy a house you have unforeseen expenses um, <clears throat> your AC might go out or might be bad um, bad drainage or you know you might have to get things replaced so uh, just make making sure you have that three to six month expenses free uh, free up free up things and give you a peace of mind just in case things like that do occur so um that's what I did. I got my 20% down payment. I saved three to six months expenses and I paid off all debt. Uh, my student loan has been paid off for a while and it wasn't like extremely high. So I paid that off and that allowed me to uh, save up enough money to get a house. So those are the big things. Another thing is uh, if you have 
a big amount of money saved. A lot of people will say, well, why why won't you put it in the stock market and try to see if you can double it or get a 15% return on your money or something like that. When you're looking into investing, investing for me is a long-term game. So I don't look into uh, getting big returns in two years or three years. I look to getting big returns in 10 to 30 years. So I think uh, every 10, 10 years, you, your money should be going up at least by 15, 20%. And it can be done. <clears throat> it can be done. You just uh, have to be mindful of the stocks you pick and stuff. But when it comes to your uh, down payment for your house, you should definitely not put your money into uh, the stock market or any kind of investment vehicles like Bitcoin or cryptocurrency or stock exchange, any of those things like that. Um, you want to have your money liquid. You want to be able to get it. And I know people will say, well, it's not that liquid if you put in an online bank and it takes two to three days to get uh, to you, which is true, but it's uh, safe. It's safer there and the yield is better there than being uh, in a regular bank and getting hardly any interest or being in the stock market and your money could go up. You can have 40000 saved and then turn around and have... 25,000 or 30,000 at the end of the next year because the market tanked or you just your investments just didn't do good that year. So those are the biggest things, man. Be mindful of uh how you spend your money, create a budget, get your 20% down, 3 to 6 months expenses and uh just keep saving, man. And another thing that I did this year was I know a lot of people say, well, how can you save that much if you only make a certain amount? I don't look at life or anything like that. The way I looked at it was, this is the amount of money I need to save, and how can I save it? Or another way I looked at it is, this is the amount of money I save. This is the amount of money I have coming in. Now, what can I do to increase my saving? So for me, um, I already had a really good job this year. What I did was, <clears throat> I worked two jobs now. I've worked about three or four jobs this year just to save extra income. Now, I didn't do that throughout the whole year, but three to four months, what I would do is I would just get a job and work it and have that extra money that I would put back into my uh, savings for my house because, you know, I had a goal in mind and I know the amount that I needed to reach to achieve that goal and I knew I needed to find ways to do it. So those are uh, kind of the things that I did. Um, if you want to know anything else, just hit me up. Like I said, I'll be making another video in the future talking about uh, my dream car. And um, that's it. What's up, YouTube? I go by the name of Carlos Brown. And if you found this information helpful, what I would like you to do is like, share, and subscribe to this channel. I'll be posting videos every week. Thank